Hello and welcome back to another one of these tutorials on the N3K channels. So a couple of weeks ago I have posted a Facebook post that says we're going to be making a tutorial about tile map. So look, here it is, it is a overview of basically what you can do with tile map and uh, we're just going to be exploring things around. I'm going to give you my opinion, my feedbacks on uh, using it because I've used it in the past. Some of the things were really cool and some of the things were kind of awful still as of 2017.2 which is a, the version I'm running in right now. Um, as we speak though there is a version called 2017.3 that is in beta and that is a little bit better for tile map but we're not going to touch the beta one today. We have a scene over here. Empty scene. Let's make sure we are in 2D and I'm just going to right click anywhere um, create a new 2D object and then create a new tile map. Cool, so now you'll find out that you have a grid, which if you double click on it, it's just this thing here and under it, a tile map. So assuming you're creating, uh, I don't know, a, like a top-down RPG game um, for some reason, you could name your first tile map floor and then later on you could add another one that you could, uh, you could actually call it walls or objects or prefabs. It's really depending on how you'd like to place the layers in your game. So let's call this one objects. So we have two of those tile map. Um, but before we go any further, let's make sure that we have some sprites because to place stuff in the tile map, we need to have some sprite. Now right here I have a big atlas that if I open it, you'll see I have a couple of crop sprites. So like everything you you could think of when I have my floor here, I have uh, walls, I have weapons, I have chests. A couple of nice little sprites, just make sure you have sprites in your project. They don't have to be in a sprite editor like I'm using right now. You can simply drag and drop your sprite as PNG object directly in your project, but mine, just know that mine are stored beneath this atlas object. Okay, so once you have that, you need to define a tile palette. So what are you going to be using to draw on your canvas and that is your canvas right here. We're going to go under window and then under tile palette and we're going to just anchor this on the left side. Now I already have a palette but let's just assume I didn't by um, going here and creating a new palette. This one can be called tile map tutorial in my case and then they're going to ask you to put it somewhere so of course I'll be putting it in the folder I've made just for that and here we go so this is how your tile palette is going to look and at this point all you have to do is to drag and drop the elements that you'll want to draw on your canvas so assuming I want to be drawing say some chests I'll draw I'll actually take all of these chests and drag and drop them in here now every time you drag and drop one of these it is going to create a new asset called a tile and if you saw we saved ours right here so we have a bunch of these little guy um, that are tiles we'll come back to that in a second but they have sprite color and collider type so let's go back a little bit I need some walls so I'll be importing some say some um, floor first maybe just one tile of floor here it is and whoops I didn't save it at the right place there we go uh, let's also import one wall and we could go ahead and add just some different type of floor just for mass editing we'll see that a little bit later so drag and drop these somewhere else and while I'm at it I'm also going to import some walls Cool, so now we should have enough uh, stuff just to start messing around with our tile tile map editor and also the tile map uh, system. What I'd like to do before is to make sure I actually save all of these in a proper manner. Right now, they're just all around the place. That's not very cool. Let's, uh, let's actually make sure we reorder them. Now, I've got the tip from one of my uh, students on Udemy that if I actually, when I, when I actually uh, cropped my walls, if I went from left to right like this instead of going from up to down like I did so that's my floor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 if I decided to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 instead that would have worked a lot better and that would have been rendered uh, exactly like I wanted it to be 
render in my tile palette. But in case you're like me and you did that all wrong, then you want to have to uh, you want to go ahead and modify this. So what I'll do is I'll go under Edit. There's a little button right here called Edit. Make sure I move this around by clicking on M. M stands for Move Tool, and then you can just reorder things. S for Select and M for Move. So select, move, select, move, select, and move, and you get the whole point. So we just do this uh, wherever we need to until we have the proper placement of these objects. Okay, now number one problem I ended up running into with tile map is that this, the edit we just done, are really uh, not saved all the time. So there's a bug going on where if, even if you press Control S right now, you might actually mess up your whole palette. So what you have to do is turn off edit mode, turn it back on, and then save. Now it's going to be saved, and apparently it's not going to crash, it's not going to be reordered again. And if we try that by re-importing like an enemy, and save it, so the palette stays the same. Now if I was to just move it around without doing the steps I've done, and I hit Control S, it just goes back to normal. That's a bug, and hopefully they are aware of it. But we managed to find our way to fix it by turning off the edit, turning it back on, and then saving. So that is the tile palette. Now that we do have these, this palette, we can actually draw on. Okay, so at this point, we have our tile palette, and we, we pretty much just mess around with this. We know we have a working tile palette. Now what we want to do is draw this palette to this canvas. And uh, let's go ahead and just like make a selection. Let's make this selection right here. And if you can tell, directly in the scene, you'll be having this new tool, this new paint tool. And that's only available simply because the tile palette is open. So let's go ahead and drop some floors, but of course, it looks kind of weird, uh, simply because our sizing is not right. So this palette right here, every single object inside of it is actually 16 by 16 pixels, which means that I'll go on my grid and turn my cell size into 16 by 16, which is then going to give me this result. Exactly what we wanted. So that's all we have to do. So let's just place a couple of floor around. Um, as you can see, I can, I can do like a whole selection like this. I can also only select, say, that. And then click and hold, so you're drawing like you would draw. Um, you can also hold shift to remove, and that's going to remove everything. So you can remove all you've done thus far. What else can we do? We can also, oh, we can also do a color picker kind of deal. So if I go here, and let me just complete this. There we go. And say I'd like to actually copy over the same thing, but down there. I can do control, and by clicking on the tile I want, so say this one at the top, I can have it in my selection. Now if you hold control and you click and drag, you can select more than one. So obviously this is not going to work, because if you can tell, um, we'd like to put this thing over here on top of the original floor, but if we do that, the original floor is going to be gone. So what you can do is change the actual uh, tile map you're writing on. So let's go ahead and create a new one to the object tile map and I'll just say secondary or I just call it walls so I'll be putting all my floor on the same and I'll be putting my wall on another layer let's go ahead and by that logic I'll get rid of this now if I want to draw these walls I have to actually change the active tile map that is very important else it's simply not gonna work so let's go under wall and now we can start drawing this so um, I'll actually do it this way. Now I'll copy over all of this by holding control and let's go down here. So this gives us the result we wanted, however we'd like to have the wall on top of the floor so our little edge here, our little bump actually shows. We can do that by heading over to the wall layer and then say order and layer could be 1. So you can also play around with the sorting layer. Uh, it's really up to you. Okay, now let's take a look at the objects layer, the individual layer, and I'll be putting my chest on. So let's go ahead and change our active tile map to object, and we can draw some chests. Let's say we'll put one here and one there. And why not one more here? So 
What's happening with these is that they actually, they're being taken, well, all of these, including the walls and the floor, they're all being taken from the tiles we put down there. So chest zero, I think, is what we took for this one. Let's go ahead and play with the settings a bit. If we play with the actual tiles down here in the folder, the one we saved, we're actually playing around with all the reference of this object. So let's go ahead, copy this over so we see it multiple times. And we're going to go ahead and just play with the light. As you can see, we're modifying all the instances of this chest, which might be something very cool because that's what you need, or it might be something really annoying because you just like to modify one of them. Okay, so assuming that we want to modify one of them, we have to go under the Select tool, and this is going to work under a scene as well. You'd go ahead and click one of these chests and then manually modify what you need to modify. Now, do know that the color is, however, not something you can modify, but you can play around with the position. As you can see, you can play around with the, the scale. So maybe this one is a bigger chest, so 2, 2, 2, and it has a weird rotation. Uh, of course, rotation on the x-axis is not going to look so good. Maybe Z is the only one you want to play around with in this case. Um, but as you can tell, uh, it you can you can modify these things individually if you need to. Which brings me to another point, and that other point are the colliders. Now, there is something quite cool. If you go under Tile Map, say you only want your walls to be the one that you can collide with, you can go ahead and add a grid, actually a Tile Map Collider 2D. In fact, that's the one you'll need for every single object that you want to have Collider on if they're on the Tile Map. So if you press on this, you're going to see that we have these nice little colliders. They're matching the shape. It's quite cool. Let me go ahead and just put some around as well. So we're on the wall layer. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a little bit of walls. Oh, and I haven't really mentioned that before, but you also have the rectangle tool in which you can just do a big edit like this. And as you can see, we now have colliders, and this is going to work perfectly fine for your, your 2D um, gameplay. So this also accepts Raycast to the Raycast that's, that accepts, you know, if you have a, a player running around with a box collider 2D, it's also going to be registered. It's just like a normal 2D collider. Now all of these objects right here are on what we call a sprite collider, which is perfectly fine for these wall. Um, it's perfectly fine for these very small wall as well, but sometime for some optimization purpose or because you don't want it to be like that, uh, you can change the colliding type to grid. So let's find these walls. I think they are wall 1, wall 4, and wall 7. Well, in fact, let's just take all of these walls and change the collider type to grid. What this is going to do is that our little bumps we had in the past is actually now just a, um, a full grid. I'm going to change the wall 4 so you see the difference. So that is a sprite collider, and that is a grid collider. It's just taking the full grid. Uh, of course, you want to have some sprite collider for your smaller objects, such as, say, enemy, assuming that we're painting an enemy in here. So let me go ahead and draw him in the wall layer, so this way he has a collider. This one right now is on sprite, so it's a little bit different. It's not that big. Um, you know, you can play around with the, the collider of this one because it might not be the one you want. Might be a little bit too big, but you get the point. Um, if this was on the grid, it would be much more different. Let's go ahead and try this. There you go. So you get the whole point with this. Now just assume that whatever we've done in here, everything we've done is actually compatible with your 2D game. So you can go ahead and start making your levels with that. You can go ahead and start colliding with that. You can add physics. All you want can be done directly in here in the tile map and it is a fairly nice tool I just hope that they're gonna fix all the little bugs um, I ran into quite soon there's another bug I'd like to mention about um, that's actually fixed in 2017.3 but that's not fixed in 2017.2 and it's the fact that if you actually render this game out if you not render sorry if you build this game out um, the colliders are not going to work they only work in the editor at the moment and if you build to Windows or standalone Linux, which is the two I've tested, it doesn't work once it's built. But then I moved on to Unity 2017.3, and then it started working. So obviously there is a couple of things that uh, they're working on right now. You can get an early fix on Unity Beta if you'd like to, but I'll just wait it out because I don't need to publish my game 
anytime soon. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was uh, enlightening. Maybe you're going to change a little bit of what you've done in your past, uh, different games you've made in 2D to the new tile map system because it is quite cool and a lot more efficient than the last method we had of making a tile tiled game, which just instantiated a single object for every single grid items. So again, thanks so much for watching. Join us on Discord and uh, join us on Facebook as well. That's where I'm going to be most active as I am still in Vietnam, still trying to uh, kickstart this little business. Alright guys, I'll catch you later. Bye bye.